Egypt, a land of ancient treasures and hidden secrets. Of all its kings and queens, one is still cloaked in mystery, Cleopatra. Lover of Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, and at one time the most powerful woman in the world. But evidence of Egypt's last queen has all but vanished from history. Now, that's about to change. A maverick archaeologist has discovered a long-lost temple that played a crucial role in her reign. Are you ready to risk your life <laughs> for Cleopatra? <laughs> She's unearthed stunning artifacts. So tell me where the snakes are. Mysterious underground tunnels. And even a vast city of the dead. It's a wonderful necropolis. Look at that. They're fabulous. Finds that are helping to transform our understanding of this enigmatic queen. She was a mother. She was a wife. She was a queen. She was a goddess. Even more exciting, she's discovered hidden subterranean chambers. I can confirm to you something, that somebody is hiding something. And in the biggest breakthrough in the search for Cleopatra, she may even have found the final resting place of Egypt's last queen. It's a huge opening cut into the bedrock. When you do see them, they are the shafts that lead to tombs. Goddess Cleopatra. Everything is permitted to a goddess. Two thousand years after her death, the legendary Queen of Egypt still fascinates us. Cleopatra is a pivotal figure in Egyptian history. She comes from a background of the most turbulent, dramatic, soap operatic royal family there's ever been. The Cleopatra we think we know is the Hollywood version. But the real Cleopatra remains tantalizingly out of reach. Inevitably, you end up with more myth than history. Today, barely any traces of Cleopatra survive. And the greatest mystery of all is still unsolved. Where she's buried. The truth is, we don't exactly know what happened, either around the time of her death or, or what happened to her body afterwards. But now there's a new twist in the story of Cleopatra. And it comes from a surprising source. Kathleen Martinez is a criminal lawyer from the Dominican Republic. But for the last 20 years, she's used her courtroom experience to turn Cleopatra detective. I don't think 100% as an archaeologist because my first training is as, as a criminal lawyer. So I took Cleopatra as a case. Kathleen has had a lifelong fascination with Egypt's last queen. She believes that there's more to Cleopatra's life and what happened after her death than the legend lets on. Her obsession took her to Alexandria in northern Egypt. It was believed to be the site of Cleopatra's ancient capital. But that city sank beneath the waves more than a thousand years ago. Archaeologists have found her palace here, and many believe her tomb must lie here too. But Kathleen has a radical new theory about where the queen was laid to rest. In 31 BC, the Roman navy defeated Cleopatra and her lover, Mark Antony, at the Battle of Actium. Fleeing to Egypt, they both committed suicide. Kathleen believes that Cleopatra's suicide was part of a premeditated plan, designed to prevent her body falling into the hands of the vengeful Romans. When I study carefully, the last days of Cleopatra, I realized it was the beginning of a religious act that might end up with her being buried in a temple. 
and her lost tomb could be found there. Kathleen believes that Cleopatra was a strategist who devised a plan for her body to be buried in secret, far from Roman eyes, beneath a sacred temple. After studying ancient texts, she investigated 21 possible burial sites. But only one of them jumped out at her, Taposiris Magna. A ruined temple complex, 40 kilometers west of Alexandria. Kathleen suspected that this pile of ancient rubble dated back to the time of Cleopatra's family, the Ptolemies. But no one had been able to prove it. This is not a site that would have piqued the interest of the archaeological community, particularly any connection between the site and Cleopatra. This was news to me. Over the last century, several archaeological teams have dug here and found little of interest. But could Kathleen's hunch be right? Could this be the site of the lost tomb? My first reaction when I entered the temple was to laugh because I knew I was in the right place. Unusually, the walls enclosing the site bear no inscriptions. Nothing to link it to any specific time or dynasty in Egyptian history. The most accepted idea about this temple, it was never finished. All the scholars believe it never functioned as a temple, and I believe they were wrong. Experts had written off Tapasiris Magna as unfinished and unimportant. Kathleen was determined to prove that it was more than just an ancient building site. Nobody ever came to this site with a clear idea of what they were searching for. Most archaeologists were dismissive of the theories of this self-trained novice. I think Kathleen's ideas come across as very sensationalist in the absence of anything um, really scientific. There was a lot of scepticism about her work. It's as though she'd ghosted in from nowhere. But the sheer scale of the site and its proximity to Cleopatra's ancient capital convinced Kathleen she was on the right track. If she could find the tomb of Cleopatra, there's no telling what secrets would be revealed of the Queen's life and eventual death. What people know about Cleopatra is what we have seen in the movies. She was a musician. She, she studied medicine. She wrote about law. There's so many qualities, and uh, she did so much in a time where women were so restricted. While Roman poets dismiss Cleopatra as a manipulative temptress, medieval Arab writers paint her in a very different light, as a philosopher, scientist, and astute political leader. It's a view that's gained ground among scholars in recent years, and Kathleen is not the only one on Cleopatra's trail. Historian Dorothy Thompson has unearthed fresh insights about her reign from a handful of surviving ancient documents. My interest is in the Queen actually in Egypt. Not the Queen, who's constructed for us by others, not the mirage of the Queen, but the Queen we can tell from the texts. In the Berlin Museum, fragile scraps of 2,000-year-old papyri give a glimpse of the political control Cleopatra wielded during her reign. This dates from 50 BC. It's from within a year and a half of her coming to the throne. And it says at the top, the Queen Basilissa, that's Cleopatra, made this royal order, Prostaxantone. Cleopatra is concerned that the people of the capital city should have enough to eat. 
Cleopatra made the proclamation when Egypt was under severe threat of famine, well aware that hunger could lead to dangerous unrest. She's making a decree saying that no one who purchases corn may take it either to the north or to the south. Everybody must bring it to the capital city. And anyone who disobeys this is to be punished by death. This is Cleopatra far removed from the Hollywood glitz and glamour. This is a real politician, somebody who's aware of problems and prepared to do something about them. This isn't Cleopatra, the, the seductress. This is Cleopatra, the working queen. Before Kathleen Martinez could start her investigation at Tapasaris Magna, she had to apply to the Egyptian authorities for permission to dig. She put her theory about Cleopatra's tomb to the Minister of Antiquities himself. What made me to decide actually the excavation? Because she's a very stubborn woman. She is sure that the tomb is there. Kathleen was given just two months to prove she was onto something. She mounted a site survey and started her dig. Eight weeks later, with the permit about to expire, her team had drawn a blank. Everybody here at the site were disappointed. We didn't find anything. We didn't even find pottery or nothing. On the final day of the dig, in a last desperate throw of the dice, Kathleen spread her team out across the whole site. Not far from the north gate, she stumbled on a mysterious depression in the ground. We start cleaning, and then suddenly a small hole opened, and we start removing the sand, and we found it was a shaft. Kathleen had unearthed a hidden shaft leading deep underground. It had holes to go down, like in ancient times. They never used a ladder. And we was studying the shape of this chamber because it's unique. The shaft descended five meters underground to two hidden chambers. But what could they be for? You can see traces of color. It was painted. It was an astonishing find. A subterranean level that previous digs by professionals had overlooked. It's possible the chambers were used for priestly rituals. But whatever their purpose, the find persuaded the authorities to extend Kathleen's permit. It was the happiest day of my life. Because of this shaft, we continue our search for Cleopatra. Let's start. Kathleen had proved there was much more to Tapasiris Magna and meets the eye. But could it also conceal the long lost tomb of Cleopatra? The final days and untimely death of Cleopatra, last queen of Egypt, are shrouded in mystery. We don't have a clear account of what happened when Cleopatra died because nobody at the time wrote it down. After losing a decisive sea battle against Rome, the rebel general Mark Antony took his own life, and his lover, Cleopatra, prepared to follow him. In the classic telling of the story, she then committed suicide by clasping a poisonous snake and asp to her bosom. 
But what happened next is a mystery. We simply don't know what happened to Cleopatra's body. The events around her death are quite confused and conflicting, and they don't really give us any clear pointers as to where she was buried. Kathleen Martinez believes she knows. She thinks the lost tomb lies somewhere in the sprawling ruins of Taposiris Magna. I think if Kathleen Martinez were to find the tomb of Cleopatra intact, I mean, it would be a discovery on a par with Howard Carter's discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun. During her second season on site, Kathleen turned her attention to traces of a building discovered by a previous dig. It was thought to be a temple dedicated to Osiris, god of the dead. But nobody knows who built it. There's very little left of the structure itself. But digging down, Kathleen made a major breakthrough. She discovered a set of extremely rare and fragile tablets. Well, this is the magical moment. Have to be very careful. They are made of clay and semi-precious stones like lapis lazuli and turquoise and glass. These rare artifacts are examples of foundation deposits. It's incredibly important, if you can, to find that foundation deposit because that's what gives you your information about when the temple was first built. The inscriptions were faint, but legible. We can see the inscriptions are not clear. They are uh, written in Greek. And it refers to Basileus Ptolemaeus, which means King Ptolemy. The tablets mark the temple's inauguration. Kathleen believes they were laid around 2,200 years ago by Ptolemy IV, Cleopatra's great-great-great-grandfather. Kathleen's finds stunned the world of archaeology. She had proved a direct link between the temple site and Cleopatra's family line. It strengthened her conviction that Cleopatra herself would have worshipped here. We were already proving with archaeological evidence that everything that was written about this temple was wrong. But dating the Osiris temple was just the start. A few weeks later, extending her excavation north, Kathleen made another major find. I continued in this direction and I found this block. We continued cleaning and we found the remains of a wall. And then we opened to the north and we found the size of the building and it had a door. It was a second temple and one which appears to bear the hallmarks of the cult of the goddess Isis. Isis temples can have three separate rooms, with one acting as the inner sanctuary. It's a perfect match, which suggests another tantalizing link to Cleopatra. To ancient Egyptians, Isis was the supreme female deity. Isis was a really important goddess to the Egyptians. She seemed to really resonate with ordinary people. And Cleopatra portrayed herself as the personification of Isis on Earth. So for Cleopatra to ally herself with this goddess to the point of declaring herself to be the living Isis was a really important matter. And I think it was something that she took really seriously to present herself as Isis. It's clearly a, a very canny move. It's an obvious thing for somebody who wishes to be accepted by her people. Where else would the living Isis choose to be buried than beneath an Isis temple? Digging within the temple walls, 
Kathleen unearthed what looked like a holy shrine and hit the jackpot. We clean it inside, and inside the shrine, it has around 200 coins. Some of them were in very good condition. And we could see immediately it has Cleopatra's face. You cannot imagine the happiness when I discover inside the century of Isis the face of Cleopatra in a coin. Was beautiful Cleopatra. At last, Kathleen was face to face with her heroine. The coin suggested the temple was still in active use at the time of Cleopatra's reign. We believe the coins were there as offering to the goddess Isis. Bronze coins from Cleopatra's reign reveal a canny ruler, keenly aware of the importance of her brand management. Cleopatra's ancestors had only put their faces on high-value silver coins used by the rich. But Cleopatra wanted her face seen and adored by all her subjects. What Cleopatra did that was new was introduce her own portrait onto this bronze low-value coinage. And that's an important step because it made sure that her image reached a much broader public. Anybody conducting a day-to-day -day transaction with a coin like this would be confronted with Cleopatra's image. Cleopatra wanted to remind her whole country rich and poor, who was in charge. And it wasn't just her own people she needed to keep in check. She was also a player on the international stage. At the Berlin Museum, historian Dr. Dorothy Thompson has studied a second ancient text, which reveals Cleopatra trying to gain allies in Rome. It's an agreement by the Queen that a Roman, and this is the real interest of the text, that a Roman is being given very significant tax concessions. Right down at the bottom of the text is the one word, Guinness, though. In English, that means, so be it, let it happen. Cleopatra's seal of approval for the decree that's recorded above. The instruction is written differently to the rest of the document, prompting speculation as to who might have written it. The exciting question is, is this Cleopatra's own hand that's used here? It would be nice, wouldn't it, if she'd written that? But we can't really be sure. In the fourth year of Kathleen's dig, and spurred on by the discovery of the Isis temple, she continued the search for Cleopatra's lost tomb. Poking around outside the temple enclosure, she spotted some strange indentations in the ground. So we started cleaning the meters. When we saw the first steps going down, uh, we knew it was a shaft. Kathleen had uncovered a shaft, leading 25 meters underground. Who would like to go inside the shaft with me? <laughs> Are you ready to risk your life <laughs> for Cleopatra? <laughs> After clearing many tons of rubble from the shaft, Kathleen prepares to venture underground. Yalla, yalla, yalla. Put your hands on the wall. Okay, fine. At the bottom, 
she finds two secret passageways. So first we will go in this direction to the north and then we'll go to this direction. Her hope that one might lead to a hidden tomb. The tunnels have been expertly chiseled out of the bedrock. Clearly a monumental task. I need the Bedouin close okay. to me to tell me where the snakes are. Can I have the lights here? Yeah. You see, it has the steps going down in this. Along room. the passageway, she finds more vertical shafts leading down from the surface. Why do you need several entrances? Why? Because anybody can find or discover the entrance. So please do it carefully. But there's no sign of a tomb. But amid the debris, she stumbles on more clues. Yeah. Look. 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 After 60 meters, the passageway narrows, and the team hits a dead end. Bye. We found marble that belongs probably to Isis Chapel. And the pottery will help us to date exactly when the tunnels were repaired. Even more exciting, Kathleen has also recovered some human remains. We found skulls, a skeleton. But who they were and what they were doing here is a mystery. Kathleen's excavation has so far revealed passageways and shafts beneath Taposiris Magna, stretching for 300 meters. It all helps to reinforce her original hunch that Cleopatra's tomb could be hidden somewhere underground. Over the course of Cleopatra's 22-year reign, Egypt and Rome were enemies, but also bedfellows. In 48 BC, just three years after Cleopatra came to the throne, Julius Caesar conquered Egypt. He and the 20-year-old queen became lovers. The young Cleopatra would go on to prove herself a clever and talented politician, able to forge strong political alliances even with her enemies. When we think about the relationship between Julius Caesar and Cleopatra, and on the one hand we talk about seduction, and on the other hand we talk about political maneuvering, we can actually have both. Rome is the biggest power in the Mediterranean. Egypt needs someone like that to ensure that its power remains. And at the same time, Julius Caesar wants to have Egypt in his back pocket because it's the breadbasket of the Mediterranean. The love affair would last four years and even produced a son. Caesar brought Cleopatra to Rome and showered her with gifts, building a temple in her honor. But the queen had something to give in return, a wealth of scientific knowledge, including the secrets of time. In Caesar's day, the Roman calendar was based on the phases of the moon. But the 28-day lunar cycle meant the months and seasons drifted each year. You didn't have a fixed number of days per year. Sometimes the whole system can get out of whack. But Cleopatra came from a seat of great learning and knowledge. The Egyptian calendar was based on Earth's journey around the sun. Now, Caesar embraced this idea. 
by adopting the practices of the astronomers under Cleopatra in Egypt. Julius Caesar finally had a solar cycle system based upon the movement of the sun. It gave Romans stability, 365 days a year, and every fourth year you have a leap year. This is the modern calendar cycle. Julius Caesar brought it to Rome, the empire, and the world. In 44 BC, Caesar's reign came to an abrupt end with his murder. And Cleopatra fled back to Egypt. Kathleen Martinez thinks the queen may have found solace in her temple a Taposaurus Magna. By 2014, after almost 10 seasons digging, Kathleen had amassed a stunning collection of artifacts, all dating from the time of Cleopatra's royal line. This is one of my favorite artifacts, the bust of this Ptolemaic queen. So this is a liner to do the makeup in the eyes. You can see it's a weight. They were selling something. This is the bust of Alexander the Great. This is a penis, belonged to Egyptian god of fertility. The artifacts were building up a picture of an important temple site. Then, excavating near the north door of the temple complex, she unearthed something intriguing a row of 14 curiously shaped stone plinths. What is important about this is that all of them has a different geometrical shape. This is unique. So far we have uncovered 14 bases, so maybe it could be related to the, the Ptolemies itself because they were 14 who rules Egypt. The Ptolemies were Cleopatra's family line. Kathleen believes the plinths once bore statues of the Ptolemaic pharaohs, creating a grand avenue into the temple enclosure. That would make Taposaurus Magna a highly important site and a fitting spot for the tomb of a queen. No, it, it, it looks like it's Latin. And, it has and Kathleen's theory that Cleopatra is buried here was about to get another significant boost. In February 2015, digging in the rubble behind the plinths, she stumbled upon something extraordinary. A large inscribed limestone tablet, or stela. In an echo of the world-famous Rosetta Stone, the inscription appears in both hieroglyphic and demotic the everyday written language of ancient Egypt. Can you believe that this piece of block has changed the history of Taposiris Magna? I already named Stila Magna. The Stila dates from seven years into the reign of Ptolemy V. So it predates the Rosetta Stone by two years. The inscription proved the site was linked to the goddess Isis who Cleopatra claimed to embody on Earth. The decree by Ptolemy V is the declaration of Taposiris Magna as a religious center for Isis, for worshiping Isis, and the land, it was considered a sacred land. And everything around the temple was used to worship Isis. This is an important text. It shows us that this is a temple which is very much part of the royal institution at that time, very much an important place. So this is not a temple which is a backwater. This is an important spot. The stela that Kathleen found rewrites the history books, revealing Taposiris Magna to be the most important Ptolemaic temple site in northern Egypt. It's so important for the Ptolemies that was the most important center of adoration of Isis in the north. The evidence was mounting that Cleopatra herself could have been a frequent visitor. 
But is she buried here? Kathleen decided to extend her search beyond the temple walls. 500 meters east, close to an ancient monument in the shape of a lighthouse, she spotted unexplained sunken areas in the desert floor. Well, we started excavating here, close between the lighthouse and the, the temple. And we uncovered the first steps. At the foot of the steps, she discovered a set of chambers cut deep into the bedrock. They could be only one thing, tombs. We need to check these blocks, but please wear your mask and gloves when you go down. Kathleen believes that if there are dead bodies down here, it could present a biohazard. The tombs are the first evidence of ritual burials here. All within sight of the temple complex. Further excavation revealed a labyrinth of ancient catacombs, some containing skeletons, others housing mummies. We didn't know how big it was, but now we have more than 800 skeletons. Kathleen has unearthed a huge necropolis covering hundreds of square meters an ancient Egyptian city of the dead. But who exactly is buried here? For years, Kathleen endured skepticism from the archaeological community. Now the professionals were keen to see her discoveries. Well, this looks fantastic. Dr. Salima Ikram is an expert in ancient Egyptian burials. Uh -huh, no. Oh my God, look at that. They're fabulous. The skulls of some of the mummies Kathleen unearthed had been encrusted with gold. Here, you've got all this gilding on them. What you do is you coat the face with this sort of oil resin mixture, sometimes even with beeswax, and that gives you a very tacky substance. And then you have these small squares of gold leaf which you can just attach and sometimes they overlap. <laughs> The people buried here were clearly wealthy. But gold plating the skulls wasn't just about decoration. During the later Ptolemaic and early Roman period, we noticed that mummification is not so well done. So lots of oils and unguents are poured over the body. You have fancy wrapping, you have glittery, you know, gold and this and that to sort of make up for the fact that you're not quite sure as to what you're supposed to do. Everything about the site including the poor quality mummification, suggests the burials date directly from the time of Cleopatra. It's a wonderful necropolis, which is still filled with all kinds of goodies and, you know, bodies to be found. Being so close to the temples of Isis and Osiris would have made it a highly auspicious burial spot. It's a holy place, it's a sacred place, it's a significant place. So people wanted to be buried here. Anyone who was buried here was definitely having a straight shot to eternity. The importance of the burial site convinces Kathleen that she's closing in on her ultimate goal, the tomb of Cleopatra herself. Self-trained archaeologist Kathleen Martinez believes she's close to the archaeological find of the century, the long-lost tomb of Cleopatra. I think if Kathleen found the tomb of Cleopatra intact, she would be elevated to the status of the most famous archaeologist in the world. Kathleen had already discovered a series of unexplained shafts and tunnels underneath Tapasaris Magna, and she's still convinced that it's here that she'll find the tomb of Egypt's last queen. But is there any evidence that ancient Egyptians buried their rulers beneath temple sites? 
In 2014, archaeologists at the Ramesseum, an ancient temple complex in southern Egypt, found something intriguing. A shaft leading underground, containing ritual burial items from a royal tomb. This sensational discovery was of a princess, um, Karamama, um, who was an extremely high-ranking priestess. Karamama's tomb predates Cleopatra's reign by 900 years. But did Cleopatra revive an ancient royal tradition to be buried beneath Tapasaris Magna? It's very possible Cleopatra could have been buried in a similar shaft um, underneath a temple. There are actually quite a lot of examples of high status, royal even individuals, royal women in particular, being buried in shaft tombs um, within temple complexes. I will go down. Close by the West Gate, Kathleen discovered a chamber not far beneath the surface. Inside it, the remains of a woman. We found the skeleton of this woman who was carrying a baby. Analysis of the bones reveals the pregnant woman is too young to be Cleopatra. This woman is still a puzzle for us because we, we don't know what happened to her. The skeleton is a breakthrough. It's the first indication that burials did take place inside the temple. And Kathleen's hunt was about to take a thrilling turn. In the northwest corner of the site, the team unearthed some steps. They led down to a wide opening cut out of the bedrock. We started cleaning around, but it's 10 meters by 10 meters by 9 meters. It was very deep, and it was a big cut like the tombs of the Valley of the Kings. So we, we thought we were thrilled. This is it. Digging down to its base, they find a narrow shaft going deep underground. We start cleaning the shaft. And at the depth of 23 meters, we found two skeletons. And that makes us still more excited. Kathleen dug down 35 meters and found nothing. But according to Egyptologist Chris Norton, a deep wide opening like this with a shaft at its base usually means one thing. The most striking feature is just its massive size. It's a huge opening cut into the bedrock. Um, you don't see those very often. When you do see them, they are the shafts that lead to tombs. It's a huge breakthrough. But with this year's digging season nearly over, Kathleen is running out of time. She brings in ground-penetrating radar to probe the area around the shaft. Her aim, to see if there are any chambers hidden behind its walls. We're trying to use the geophysical missiles to help the people work in the archaeology to find where is the mummy of Cleopatra. The results are exciting. They show two possible cavities. The GPR reveal important cavities, big enough to be uh, the final resting place of a pharaoh. I can confirm to you something, that somebody is hiding something. What is it? We don't know. Maybe it's the mummy of Cleopatra, maybe. Kathleen's time at Tapasaris Magna is up for the year. Further investigation of the shaft will have to wait. But her hunch that there is more to the site than the experts suspected has been vindicated. She's proved that Tapasiris Magna was a temple complex of huge significance in Cleopatra's day, and found compelling evidence there could be a burial chamber concealed deep underground.
I think Kathleen has taken us closer to finding the tomb of Cleopatra than we've ever been before. An archaeologist in Egypt claimed today to be on the verge of finding the burial place of Cleopatra. And now, the whole world is taking notice of her quest. He displayed artifacts found in an ancient temple near Alexandria. It's the beginning of a journey that will end with a big discovery. So far, they've uncovered a variety of likenesses of Cleopatra. I will never stop until I find the tomb of Cleopatra. I feel in my heart the tomb of Cleopatra is under my feet at Tabo Zero's Magna.